extraterrestrial of alien origin sauce. Okay. Yeah. Clearly marked sauce. Yeah. One bottle. 20 ounces. That's all we get. Okay. Then I'll stand in goddamn line for a chicken sandwich with some of that alien sauce on it. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tether Radio Podcast, the only podcast keeping you from spiraling out into the infinite abyss. I'm your host, Daniel, and I'm joined by my brother and co-host, Joseph. Yo. Joey morning. B's back. Morning, morning. How you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. How about yourself? Uh, no complaints. Yeah. None whatsoever. Cool. Just, cool. uh... Jamming, jamming some air guitar over here. You can't hear it, can't nice. see it, but it's great. <laughs> no stairway to heaven, bro. <laughs> no stairway to heaven. That's exactly, uh, exactly correct. Uh, how's your uh, How's your week, man? Uh, it was good. It was good. Um, spent had to had to do some shit and then handle some shit and then hop over and do some other shit, but. It was good, man. Life's good. We're coming into the fall, which, as a kid, used to bum me out. As an adult, I get amped on. You feel the same way? Uh, 100%, man, because it means that we might get a little bit of a reprieve from this fucking miserable weather. <laughs> Yikes. Plus, plus, now that I'm uh, not working it's like on we got weekend, a nag. Say what? It's like we got a nag on our hands. <laughs> No, plus, since I'm not working uh, currently, uh, I'll, I get to watch football and shit on Saturday, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, for sure, dude. Um, for sure. Yeah, dude. Have you ever seen the movie? This is super random, but we we just recently watched it. Um, have you ever seen the movie uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil? No, but I've heard it's great. It's, it's really people. funny. Yeah. yeah. Alan Tudyk is funny as shit, man. Who's Alan Tudyk? What else has he been in? Um, let's see. He voiced uh, he voiced the drawer. Uh, he voiced the droid on uh, Rogue One, and he was also in Death at a Funeral, the original British version. Uh, he was the guy that accidentally took like the like ecstasy mixed with like acid or something like that before they went to the funeral. Is it T T U D Y K? Correct. Alan Tudyk. You'd, you'd recognize him if you saw him. <clears throat> He's like a pretty big um, British comedian, I think. So No, it says he's American. Oh, really? El Paso, oh, I thought he was Texas, British. bitch. Oh, no shit. I thought he was British. No, um, I think you were thinking of Billy Magnuson. <laughs> Billy Magnuson. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely it. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Well, my uh, my wife is now newly uh, tatted up. Yeah, how did that go down, man? I did, dude. Without a without a hitch, man, and it looks really good. I mean, no, I mean, when when was the choice made? How did all that? Happen? Oh, oh, she went to she saw some stuff on uh, this Instagram profile, I believe, and really liked this. Like, it's like a dot dot art almost kind of thing so that when it excuse me when the tattoo kind of blurs a little bit over the years it actually almost doesn't look better but it doesn't affect it as much kind of thing right but um but yeah dude it it ended up it ended up looking really good like really really well done and tasteful so (laughs) yeah sweet um, one of her friends is like, I'm so glad you didn't get like a fucking Winnie the Pooh on your calf or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Jesus, I would have put my foot down for that one. Yeah. I mean, a Winnie Pooh on the calf, it's like, <clears throat> then you'd have to buy like a busted ass Harley. You guys would have to never wear helmets. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, totally. You'd, uh, you'd have to, uh, you'd have to trade in your, your, uh, Toyota Previa. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, it my God. Yeah. There was something else that I was going to mention, and I can't remember what the hell it was. So, Anywho. Well, um, you want to hop right in, man? Let's go. Let us roll. So, Joseph, have you ever had the... Uh, the dream of someone just depositing a large sum of money into your bank account. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, well, there was a couple in, let's see, da, 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 da. where was this? I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll get around to it at some point, but um, this couple <clears throat> woke up, and uh, an extra one hundred and twenty thousand dollars had been uh, deposited into their account. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, like, they they ask in this article, "What would you do uh, with all that cash? Pay off the mountain of student loans you'd uh, otherwise be stuck with till you die? Buy a house? Buy a car? Maybe you should call the bank and find out what's going on." <laughs> No yeah. fucking shit, right? No motherfucking shit. If you ain't <laughs> if you ain't used six figures in your bank account, you know, don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, yeah. the, these people did not do that. <laughs> um, with a non hypothetical 120k uh, intended for a business was accidentally transferred into their BB and T bank account because of a teller error, the couple splurged on a camper. A Chevy, a race car, and uh, and then they gave uh, distributed about fifteen grand to close friends that that like quote needed it. <laughs> so in, in two and a half weeks, they spent about a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Of course, shit shit got found out, and uh, now they are basically being. Um, charged with uh theft <laughs> because I, I just don't <laughs> yeah go ahead well no so um they they had a 107 uh 107,416 dollar overdraft uh because the the couple's bank account originally had 1121 dollars in it <laughs> I just, I don't know. I mean, that's the reason that you have eleven hundred twenty dollars in your bank account is because if hypothetically you had one hundred twenty thousand, you'd spend it in that way. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's it's so funny. I had a uh, a thought the other day. Yeah. That I thought, that that was interesting. Well, not interesting to me. You'll be the judge of how interesting it was. <laughs> okay. But basically, like. What it takes to become really wealthy, right? Mm-hmm. You would you will you would then get totally railroaded for once you have money, right? Because mm-hmm. it's like you know you're like pinching pennies and you're like you know thinking about you know being a spendthrift and whatever. Because there are two sides of this: you got to earn it, and you got to keep it, yeah. right? Yeah. But then once you're rich, people are like fucking cheapskate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's fu- it's funny because I mean that's how wealth's built, man. Yeah. You know, you don't yeah. you can't spend it to to have it, obviously. Which uh, I don't, I don't know if this statistic still uh, holds up, but I know in the at least like maybe around like 2010, the number one uh, car or vehicle, I guess, driven by millionaires. You know, take a stab. A Ford F one fifty. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, it's, man. Not, it's not a fucking Ferrari. It's not a BMW. It's not a Lamborghini. It's not a fucking Lexus. <laughs> it's just it's interesting to me because if you think about <clears throat> the 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 I mean a car for example, right? Yeah. The type of car that you could buy for X amount of cash. Yeah. So, I mean, especially now, right? You can get some nice shit. Um very reasonably, you know, yeah. and yeah. if you and if you've got that type of money, it wouldn't really make sense to to do it. I mean, it's like you know something I think about a lot is like with because uh, I've got some student loans. I'm assuming you still do, yeah. Um, but you know, the truth is, if you have a way of investing your money, 
Like, you know, people are always like, oh, I want to pay myself out of debt. I want to pay myself out of debt. True, right? Mm -hmm. But what you're assuming is that the money you are paying towards that debt, you can't make some sort of delta on Mm -hmm. over that 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 uh, interest rate that you're paying yeah you know for example if if uh if if you have you know uh twenty thousand dollars in student loans and you have twenty thousand dollars cash sitting there Mm -hmm. and you can invest that twenty thousand and your student loan rates four percent or whatever six percent and but you could invest that stock or excuse me that cash in uh, another opportunity that got you 5%, yeah. you would have no incentive to pay off the student loan. Instead, what you would do is invest that 20000 get your 5%, pay your student loan on the correct schedule, and keep 1%. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Anyway, I like thinking about that shit. Yeah, no, but, for sure. And so but, but, <laughs> Say what? I have a lot of spreadsheets. <laughs> No, dude. I, I'll tell you, the, the spreadsheet master. I'm trying to get him uh, uh, to to guest on uh, on Tether, man. I want to get uh, Omar on here uh, at some point. He actually he put together this spreadsheet for uh, working out like home loans and shit. And like, dude, it was actually really fucking impressive. He like gave me a copy of it, and I was like, whoa, man. Okay, so here's where my mind goes, uh, right? Uh. You run a Facebook ad and an ad on LinkedIn, and you say free, or you say uh, mortgage tool, ninety nine cents. You mm-hmm. sell the fuck out of that thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding you, dude. Yeah. Like I would, I would love to call him and sell the sh- absolute shit out of that. Uh. Do like proprietary spreadsheet, whatever. You uh-huh. know, yeah, people, yeah. People would buy the fuck out of that. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Honestly, uh-huh. that's a, maybe maybe that could be his exit strategy because I don't that's think his he's exit very. Plan. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. He burns his house down. He likes <laughs> it for money. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean we're getting way off topic here. Yeah. yeah. But side note, the Ruizes mm-hmm. are fucking math gangsters. Yeah. No shit. No and they're shit. like so low key about it, like yeah. you know. But it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, let, let me put it this way. I'm glad he's my friend. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm glad he does. He hasn't weaponized that spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, again. right. He's like, <laughs> in in 15 years, he's like, guess what, motherfucker? I own your house, too. <laughs> yeah, right. You're like, what? He's like, I, op- I optimized the entire neighborhood. See, by, <laughs> I, I was trying to write a book. I ran into an old friend. He gave me a clear pill. This pill was a, a highly experimental... <laughs> <laughs> neuro pill yeah oh i traded God. stock that was actually Rob- a pre- that was actually a pretty good movie oh dude i fucking love that movie yeah. there are three movies i can never get enough of yeah which and i don't know why aviator uh-huh. limitless and there will be blood yeah you know I, I think i've only seen there will be blood like once and i've never seen the aviator aviator that's, that's howard hughes right yeah it's great it's yeah. it's it got it got panned, but it's really fucking good, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, cool, man. Well, there's we'll there's three. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk about rate. Let's talk about lifting weights with our or with our junk, man. Um. So <laughs> sorry, that was a really abrupt segue. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So I pulled this one from Men's Health. Strongman Eddie Hall just lifted a kettlebell with his dick and balls. Yes, really. <laughs> so uh apparently i which i'm not are you familiar with eddie hall uh i'm not I, i'm i'm not either but apparently he won the title of world's strongest man in uh 2017 which is kind of crazy because i feel like the, all the uh scandinavian bros always win that shit right yes and what is he <laughs> he's british uh, that's a good question. Actually, you want to, you want to look that up real quick and, uh, sure. I'll, it's I'll Eddie on. Hall. Yeah. Eddie Hall. And it's not spelled weird or anything. Um, so yeah, he's, uh, he's from Newcastle under Lyme. Nice. United, United <clears throat> Kingdom. Well, he is Jesus. a fucking huge dude. He's 31 years old. Oh, no shit. That's incredible. Um, God, si- super side note. Sorry, this this tether uh, radio episode is going to uh, just be full of tangents. 
But um, are you familiar with the? I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his actual name, but uh, the guy that played um, the character of the mountain in Game of Thrones. Yes, six nine, like four hundred and twenty five pounds. Yeah, that's that's a man right there. <laughs> and a lot it's of a, one. It's just a lot of it's a lot of carbon he's got tied up there. Dude. <laughs> yeah, right. God. Anyway, um so basically uh Eddie Hall is known for um pushing himself to the limits, uh as they say in this uh article. And he came up with a uh a new challenge kind of thing. So he apparently guests on this um this guy's uh, YouTube kind of thing, uh, channel or whatever, a British television presenter, Patty McGinnis. I was like, wow, dude, that that's fucking, that's a name right there, Patty McGinnis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so they decided to start the World Bollock Lifting Championship. <laughs> okay. And this dude was able to uh, to ultimately win the challenge. Uh, and he was able to hold a six kilogram kettlebell using just the strength of his ahem muscle. <laughs> so what they did is they literally tied a cord around the entire package and then put it down out like a pant leg of their like workout shorts or whatever, and then tied it to a kettlebell. And it was kind of, it was kind of funny though because uh, uh, let's see. McGinnis, he said, uh, if you're going to throw a challenge down here, you might have bitten off more than you can chew. Uh, because I'm 46 years of age, my testicles are already around <laughs> around my knees. I've already got a slight advantage on you. I don't have to lift them up as much. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, so Hall ended up uh, trumping McGinnis and was able to pick up a 6 kilogram, which is roughly... I don't know, it's like a little over 12 pounds, which that's, that's, yeah, I wouldn't want fucking more than a 12 pound kettle thing, kettlebell uh, weight hanging from my junk. I don't know about you. So Yeah, I mean, it depends <laughs> the situ- on the situation, obviously, you know, but, what, uh, what was the, uh, there was like some kind of, uh, I'm in the hellfire club, anything goes. <laughs> yeah, right. There was some kind of, um parade in like God, some like third world country that they would tie uh shit to their penises and swing like these weights like it was the weirdest do you remember that video uh <laughs> maybe not no not really but it was like they were dressed like almost like as monks so they had like these long so you can't couldn't actually see any of the the their packages or anything but there's just this weight and it's just swinging back and forth and it's tied to their fucking like dicks it, and like these dudes would literally elongate their dicks using these weights <laughs> i don't yeah. think that that was the purpose i think it was just uh that was a uh so a side product of <laughs> no you know so there is there is a have you ever heard of jelking no, I have not heard of jelking. <laughs> okay, jelking is the name of a kind of massage technique for the penis. It is believed to improve the size of your erection. It involves massaging your penis in a way that stretches it and improves blood flow. The technique actually comes from the ancient Middle East, but is now known across the world. Fact. I've I've never fucking heard of jelking. <laughs> yeah, jelking. What is that? What, is that is that like a combination of two words or? Uh... I think it's a translation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I, I don't really have a whole lot more to say other than Eddie Hall, man. My hat goes off to you because I don't think I want to hang. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I want to hang anything from my my junk. So. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um... He, uh, so, but really, it's not like you're hanging it, you're just, you, yeah, I mean, you're not actually using your balls, I mean, you are, but you're not, like, you yeah. get to use, you get to use the dick, too. Yeah, yeah. Which is helpful, it's yeah. helpful. 
I mean, God, if you, just, that use, if you just use the balls, holy fuck. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, I mean, that would be, a, <laughs> that would be emo- emotionally challenging to put together, I think. So, so now we're going to be magically hard, hard transported <laughs> out to Riverside, California, uh, birth, birthplace of Mi Esposa. Mm. Um, so we had a little, a bit of a situation out there in Riverside. Yeah. What was going on out in Riverside? I think going on. (laughs) So there were, um, post, uh, postal service boxes, right? Um, the, or excuse me, postal service mailboxes, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, that were disappearing. Like drop off, uh, things, right? That's exactly right. Um, and when witnesses t- told authorities around 10 p.m. on Tuesday, September 10th, they saw someone using power tools to cut the mailboxes from the ground, right? Yeah. Which that um, is kind of, that's kind of suspicious, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess it also begs the question, you know, unless you're like, what, hitching like a... <laughs> <laughs> like a group of horses up to this sucker? Like, how else are you getting it out of the ground, right? That's a good point. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. So, police believed it was a theft, mm. um, but turned out, and this was happening, I guess, in a couple of other places, yeah. uh, it turned out that uh, the mailboxes were just being picked up to be repaired. <laughs> well, so, so, okay, so wait a second. It seems like they would unbolt it, not use power tools to fucking, like, cut the legs off or something, right? Yeah, but, I mean, who knows? Maybe there's a new fancy mailbox that doesn't – won't need bolts where it's going, you know? <laughs> it won't need bolts where it's going. Was that you an know? Event Horizon shout-out? Uh, I was. <laughs> um uh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so so that could could be the case there. Yeah, that's but, that's pretty awesome though. That like the <laughs> the post office wouldn't like, which I guess like, well, I I don't know. I mean, it, it seems like they would contact the police and be like, "Hey, we're servicing this stuff, you know, or whatever." You'd I, be surprised, man. I'll well, bet, well, maybe you wouldn't be. Yeah, but. I was going to say, with anything involving our government, uh, they they never cease to uh, amaze me. Yeah, I mean the. I would say there's little to no contact regularly between these these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would make sense. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 kind of what I think. There's yeah. little little to no contact between any of these uh, any of these government agencies. That's just how they roll. Yeah, but you get a sweet ass retirement package. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah, right. You know. So, uh, well, and, um, anyhow, anyhow, to the dear residents of uh, Riverside, fear not. Your mailboxes, they're they're coming. They back. should be. Yeah, they should be replaced shortly. Yeah. Um. So this next one is actually uh kind of uh near and dear to the uh, Tether Radio podcasts. Um, how we function, man. Honestly. I think right. that uh, we'll be able to use this and uh, utilize this to hopefully make the show a little bit better and get to the uh, actual uh, source of news. Um, I pulled this one from Engadget. Google's search results will highlight original reporting. Um, so this is kind of cool, man. Um, they're working on an algorithm uh, update that would prevent the source uh, being buried under newer articles. And I think that really, uh, kind of what they're fighting for is, um, smaller news agencies or like affiliates of these, you know, of like ABC news or NBC news or whatever. Right. Um, basically, uh, affiliates will break the news, but since they really don't have the reach that the national news agencies have, they will, um, they'll basically end up getting buried under, you know, whatever, like ABC News 7 will uh, break a, a story, and, but then it'll get picked up by, like, whatever, ABC News, and that's where everybody thinks that it's, you know, the news breaks kind of thing. So right. they want to, Google wants to help the, uh, well, supposedly help the little man, I guess, 
and make sure they get the credit they deserve in breaking, you know, news. So, well, go. the other the other thing is that's really interesting, dude, about this mm-hmm. is is that um, well, go ahead, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go, no, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, <clears throat> specifically with online with uh, with online news, mm-hmm. um, it's it's there's a serious amount of bullshit where some of these. I don't know, secondary or even, you know, what's the right, the the word for three, tertiary, I guess. Ter- yeah, tertiary. Or tertiary sources. Um, I mean, they, they won't even fucking do the reporting. Yeah. Right? They yeah. will report on a preceding article. Yeah. Um, and so, much like a game of telephone, if one thing gets bastardized, that's passed down. Yeah. And if I would imagine if there's a correction on the initial article, it's not like some, you know, shit organization is also going back and issuing that correction. So honestly, what kind of comes to mind uh, in regards to this, excuse me, do you remember that article that we um, we covered that uh, it was like this guy that that would you know survived in this cave or something like that that a bear was like eating on him yeah and he yeah, like exactly. crawled out and then you know come to find out uh, basically people didn't even know if the guy actually existed or if it was just like um and like animatronics almost and like makeup work right and uh, and yeah I mean you didn't hear you didn't hear anybody going back and like correcting you know like even the big news agencies i think we ended up having to pull it um pull like some kind of uh story from like god i can't even remember who it was but it was basically just debunking what all these other news you know agencies had had put out there it was uh it was just kind of weird man but um but anyway so so Google is going to uh, fine tune this algorithm, and they're trying to quote, uh, let's see, give like the highest possible, or I'm sorry, they'll be asked to give the highest possible grade to news reporting, um, which quote provides information that would not other otherwise have been known had the article not revealed it. Often, very high quality news content will include a description of primary sources and other original reporting reference during the content creation process. Very high end or very high quality news content must be accurate and should meet professional journalistic standards. Which professional journalistic standards kind of makes me laugh. Journalism is in a uh, kind of shitty spot right now, so. <laughs> right, 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 right. I don't think they really have standards at this point. So, um, but yeah, it's so. just yeah, yeah. It's this is a. I think this is really interesting because the provenance of the article matters for sure. Yeah, like yeah. the the group that broke it or the group that's been working on it or you know whatever. I think that's pretty important. Yeah, and they they actually said that they would. Um, they would definitely take that into consideration in regards to, let's see, uh, uh, what was it? Because they, they were saying that they would take into account um, kind of the reput- uh, the reputation of whoever's breaking the news and all that and uh, just ma- basically make sure that the the they're not giving, you know, a lot of... Um, credit to some news agency that it could, you know, like fucking TMZ or something like that, you know? Right. It's right. like, obviously if it, if it's, there's not a whole lot of details and it's broke, it, the news breaks by, uh, whatever, wall street journal or something along those lines, it's going to get a little bit more, um, I would say a higher rating. Right. Than like fucking whatever the daily beast or something. So, right. Um, but anyway, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how, um, how they do that, you know, and how they, they, I mean, it, I, I know that they say that they, they want to highlight original reporting, but it's like, I'm kind of interested to see what it looks like actually in Google results, you know, Google news right. results. But, uh, anywho, um, yeah, so we'll keep an eye out and, uh, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about free will, man. How about that? Let's do it. <laughs> Let us get in the zone to talk about free will. So, 
a famous argument against free will mm-hmm. has been debunked. I thought this was uh, this. I had never heard of this before, mm-hmm. right? Um, but the 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 uh, the lead is for decades a landmark brain study fed speculation about whether we control our own actions. It seems to have made a classic mistake, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So um, in the '60s, there were uh, two German scientists. Um, that were conducting a series of experiments to uh, look at um, free will, mm-hmm. like what free will was, what, where did it come from, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so the experiment that they settled on to take a look at this went the following way. The participants sat in a chair, tucked neatly in a metal toll booth with only one task, to flex a finger on their right hand at whatever irregular interval intervals please them over and over up to 500 times a visit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so saving you the gory details, um, what they found was that just prior to the finger flexing, mm-hmm. um, there was an increase in brain activity, um, but there was a lag time, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now keep in mind, this is the sixties. Um, shit was crazy. Yeah. No. Okay. The skirts were short and the drugs were plentiful. Uh, no, but, um, so, so obviously there weren't certain advances in, uh, knowledge about neurology and, and, um, you know, how senses, take in uh, everything, you know, all the data points from the world around us and, and yeah. things like that, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, so the way they describe it is a wave that rose for about a second like a drum roll firing neurons and then ended in, in an abrupt crash. This flurry of neuronal activity, which the scientists called Barrett Schaff's potential. <laughs> I fucked that up, anyone that speaks German. But... <laughs> Better, better chaps potential or readiness potential. Yeah. Um, it was like a gift of intes- infinitesimal time travel, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So they, they could just see, according to your brain waves, that you were going to make a movement before you made a movement. Gotcha. Which seems to call into question <clears throat> the idea of free will, yeah. right? So this was so- something... Real quick, what what kind of yeah. lag time were they? Um, it was did they, yeah. It, did I they think that it? Uh, let me see. Let me see if it gives a specific. Um, uh, so they say for about a second. So I think all they're all they're saying is like they see increased activity, mm-hmm. um, and then literally it's like you know up 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 finger tap right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So just a building of that activity. They say about a second. So gotcha. I'd, imagine, I'd imagine it's sub one second. Yeah. I'm guessing. Um, so then, fast forward to 2010, a guy named Aaron Scherger, mm-hmm. um, who is a researcher at the National Institute of Health and Medical Research in Paris, mm-hmm. uh, had an idea, right? Mm-hmm. Um so he says this ongoing electrophysical noise rises and falls in slow tides like the surface of the ocean or, or – he didn't say this. This is from the article. Mm-hmm. Or for that matter, like anything else that results from moving parts. Just about every natural phenomenon I can think of behaves this way. For example, the stock market's financial time series or the weather. From a bird's eye view, all these cases of noisy data look like any other noise devoid of pattern. But it occurred to Sugar that if someone lined them up, by their peaks, thunderstorms, market uh, records, and reversed averaged them in the manner of Corn Herber, Huber, and mm-hmm. Deke's innovative approach, the results visual representation would look like climbing trends, intensifying weather, rising stocks. There would be no purpose behind these apparent trends, no prior plan to cause a storm or bolster the market. Really, the pattern would simply reflect how various factors ha- had happened to coincide, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so he did this, um, and about two years later, 
they started taking a look at this, mm-hmm. um, and they said that um, – well, and so, yeah. So two years later, uh, Sugar and his colleagues Jacob Sitt and Stanless Dehane proposed an explanation. Neuroscientists know that for people to make any type of decision – our neurons need to gather evidence for each option. The decision is reached when one group of neurons accumulates evidence past a certain threshold. Sometimes this evidence comes from sensory information from the outside world. Mm -hmm. If you're watching snowfall, your brain will weigh the number of falling snowflakes against the few caught in the wind and quickly settle on the fact that the snow is moving downward. But Libet's experiment, Sugar points out, provided subjects with no external cues. To decide when to tap their fingers, the participants simply acted whenever the moment struck them. Those spontaneous moments, Sugar reasoned, must have coincided with the haphazard ebb and flow of the participants' brain activity. Right? Mm -hmm. They would have been more likely to tap their fingers when their motor system happened to be closer to a threshold for movement initiation. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting shit, man. So it's just your brain is is just, you know... In, in taking all of this information about the world around you. Mm-hmm. And um, if you looked at your, you know, motor function um, or your brain's, um, you know, uh, a bi- your brain's, your brain firing the motor function. Yeah. But whatever ambient information that's, that you're just sensing and it's flowing through your brain at some point statistically will put your brain m- like, more in a position of firing um, uh, the motor section than at other times, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what he's saying, that there's, that you're just constantly bringing information in and that, um, you know, uh, one of the explanations that he gives is like, you know, you're br- like if you're tasked with something that's completely monotonous or... Mm-hmm you know, low stakes that your brain very well may just say, okay, we're just going to fire now because this is, you know, we're just going to fire the finger tab now because this is when we are naturally closest to the finger tab. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, looking at this information, one might say, okay, well, you know, there's something else going on behind the scenes here. Your brain is, you know, creating the signal before you're able to react to it. But when in fact, It is just your brain doing what it does. And when it gets, uh, when you have a higher propensity to fire a motor function, if you have some, you know, menial, low impact task, Mm -hmm. um, your brain is just going to go ahead and make the decision when it's easier to make the decision rather than, you know, take up uh, important CPU (laughs) on uh, thinking about the decision. Interesting. So, so basically they're saying that, um, I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. Is, is so they're saying that they're that we have more or less free will, kind of thing. How does the free How does so, the free will come? Yeah. So, come back so, into it? so what they're saying is that is that um, what they're saying is is that it's not. This is not about free will. It's just mm-hmm. about the. It's just about the way that your body brings in information and processes that information. So, so it's, is, as information as the information like that your brain is processing peaks then some like not the information that that peaks uh-huh. um so basically all these things are happening in the world around you right uh-huh. Uh-huh. and <clears throat> let's say that you're um you're sitting looking at the ocean mm-hmm. and let's say that a bird starts to swoop down okay and so your brain is like, there's birds swooping down. Is it coming closer to me? Should I move? Right? Mm-hmm. Like, the, the your brain is just naturally tracking this information. Mm-hmm. And so when you see the bird swoop down, you may, uh, n- your body may just innately react in a way that where your brain waves are more aligned with triggering a motor function. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. And so... And so that's it. You're just you're just this like sensory machine Mm -hmm. that's pulling all of this information in. um, And at certain points, your different parts of your brain will have a higher propensity to be lit up and doing things. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's not really a discussion of free will. It's just a discussion of the way that we interpret information. 
So instead of free will, it's your subconscious controlling it, kind of. Correct. Thing. Okay, gotcha. All right. Yeah, that's fucking bizarre, man. That's uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is this is this more evidence that we're just in a simulation? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just more evidence that the Bilderbergs create, you know, run the world. That's what <laughs> yeah. I'm getting at. Um, no, man. I mean, it's. It is, uh, I don't know, I, 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 you can't ponder these things too long. Yeah. You don't have enough fucking time, <laughs> but it's just an interesting data point to think about. Um, you know, I mean, you know, the, tr- the, the, tr- <laughs> the truth as we know it is a, uh, a pretty fucking weird thing, dude. We're mm-hmm. in the middle of like infinite fucking space time. You know, and we yeah. may or may not be the only, <laughs> the only, um, you know, intelligent life, period. You know yeah. what I mean? Or we yeah. may not. Like, it's yeah. just like, this kind of shit is just so silly to me because it's like, I understand the value of studying it with within, um, within what we know about the, you know, humanity in the world. But uh, it seems like, uh, uh, I don't know. Like a liner note. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's fucking, uh, that's, that's crazy, dude. That's, uh, I, I like that study though. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, 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 it's interesting. I mean, I don't know. Do you, do you think we have free will? Just backing um, this way up. So, so do I think that we have free will? Uh, I don't think that we have complete and utter free will kind of thing. I think we're kind of functioning within a, a range. Let me put it that way. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I I think that it is that that you could quite literally do anything that you want. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's not bound by physics. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in your normal day, you will not. So you're telling me that I can sit down and eat a ten pound bag of peanut butter M and M's. I think that you could sit down and eat a 10-pound bag of sugar-free gummy bears. <laughs> God. Which, by by the way, uh, listeners out there, definitely hop on uh, Amazon. Ugh, just got a beard hair in my mouth. Gross. Um, definitely hop on Amazon and look up Haribo, like, five-pound uh, gummy bear reviews. <laughs> They're sugar-free. The sugar-free, Sh- sugar-free yeah. It's uh, it's pretty incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lots of lots of uh, lots of irritated bowels yeah. for sure. But anyway, so there you go, free will. Yeah. For the most part, you got it. So <laughs> for the most part, you got it. Carpe diem, bitches. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get a little kooky um, in regards to true crime, but not really. <laughs> True crime, aka where's my uncle? <laughs> aka where's my uncle? <laughs> oh shit! Um, so I pulled this one from uh, Mashable. He never showed for Christmas Eve. Gremlins yeah. three. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll never. I never really get excited about Christmas because Dad got stuck in the chimney and died and we didn't we didn't that was a really fucking dark moment in that movie dad, dad rotted in the chimney yeah we didn't know he was there until the smell <laughs> i mean i gotta be honest man <laughs> fucking your dad had something wrong with him you know? <laughs> yeah yeah like i'm gonna climb my ass up on top of the house and get down in the chimney i was trying to remember super hardcore fucking tangent was he drunk or like did he pass out or like what the like he got stuck in the chimney but like yeah yeah i th- i can't remember how, I think, why couldn't he yell or something um i i can't remember i think he had like a like a baby pacifier in his mouth or something or he, <laughs> he was got eating wedged against, <laughs> he yeah. got wedged against the wall with a baby pacifier <laughs> yeah he got he got wedged against the wall and he had you know he was <laughs> He was sucking he, on his poo. He was eating sausages, so his, <laughs> his his fingers were all greasy. He tried to claw out, but 
He couldn't. He was too. He was too greasy from the <laughs> rattlesnake and rabbit sausages. Delicious sausages he had been eating. Have you had? Have you had sausage made out of rattlesnakes? I have. Yeah. yeah. Is it any good? <sighs> Gamey. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Gamey. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's good. It's yeah. good, man. I mean, I my palate. I'm not that discerning. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um. I'm not that Give discerning. Give me rattlesnake sausage. Give me turd sausage. I don't care. That's I'm right. not discerning. Give, give me a give me a bucket of slop <laughs> with my uh, <laughs> with my other fellow uh, fellow pigs. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, just we are. This is a, a tangent laden episode. But yeah. <laughs> did you see on social? This was maybe like two weeks ago, a week ago. Yeah. Where somebody was like, uh, there was like a. Uh, you know, a uh, video clip. I don't even know what you call these. It's like a like a video clip that's like, you know, this is how plastic bottles are made into shoes or whatever the fuck. And it like shows you the process, right? Yeah. And it's like this chef uses, you know, a t- uses a table as a presentation piece or some shit, right? Mm. And so there's this huge wooden table and this chef like pours sauce just directly on the table <laughs> And, like, puts the food directly on the table. You know, and, like, presentation-wise, like, okay, whatever. You know? Yeah. I guess it looked cool. But then somebody was like, congratulations, you invented, invented the feeding trough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you ever you seen think? the uh, – have just, you ever seen – sorry. We're, 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 we're hurtling towards a place, <laughs> like, where we will destroy the planet. You know what I mean? We will yeah. be 900 pounds and we will be, like <laughs> – you know, looking for another place to like bounce to, you know? Yeah. We're we're headed we're hurling toward a future that's a combination of Wally and idiocracy. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. That's- <laughs> oh man. Um all right, so so yeah, let's uh let's hop back to this uh article. <clears throat> um he went missing twenty two years ago, then someone saw his car in a pond on Google Maps. Dude, this is like the the image that they have on here is eerie as fuck, in my opinion. Um, so everybody knows that you can hop on Google Maps uh, on on your computer, or you might be able to do it on. Do they have satellite on uh, on phones too? They do. Know. I was, they I do. was up the latitude longitude yesterday actually gotcha um so yeah just uh, using google maps you can either obviously have just like whatever roadways and stuff where you can do satellite imagery um well this person let's see uh while looking at satellite imagery provided in the app a google user discovered an image of a car in a pond in wellington florida when the car was excavated the skeletal remains of a person were found inside so um Barry Fay was looking at uh, basically their property from you know on on Google Images kind of stuff or uh, not images Google Maps um, and uh, I think that's what is isn't that what it's called or Google World or what the fuck is that called It's called Google Maps Yeah oh, Okay Well Anyway. So he was looking at the property and noticed uh, noticed this you know faint car uh, in 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 the fucking pond, and so he called. Let's see. Um, oh no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Barry Fay received the call from a neighbor, and uh, the neighbor's ex husband had called her to say he noticed a car submerged in a pond behind Fay's house while he was searching the area. He's, now that I think about this, this is kind of creepy. Someone's ex-husband called to say that they noticed a car in a pond behind their house. You haven't seen Faye, have you? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of, that's uh, mildly interesting. But anyway, so. It's so, been high and nostalgic. Yeah, yeah. Um after confirming the sighting with the help of a drone, Faye says he called the former owner of his residence to see if she was aware of the vehicle. According to Faye, she was shocked. So um, this guy, uh, I think his name was uh, William Moult, um, a 40-year-old, 
back in 1997, had called his girlfriend to let her know that he was on his way home from a nightclub. Well, he never made it. Apparently, he was uh, most likely intoxicated and drove off the road somehow, I guess. I mean, shit, dude, it's been 22 years, so I'm assuming uh, there was a road closer and... uh, he just fucking drove into the the water and just went down as a missing person, or a missing person. Um, so Are we yeah. sure he just stopped for a drink? <laughs> he was really thirsty. <laughs> he was sitting there going, "Man, I can't wait." <laughs> is, that a, is that a retention pond? <laughs> oh my god! Let's just stare over there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's how it played The water's out. filling the cab of his car. He's like, oh, my God. Oh, God. I'll have to drink my way out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. They noticed that, uh, according to his, his uh, the forensics on his skeleton, he was engorged with retention water. He had <laughs> tried to sup his way out, he wrote. I don't know. He, he tried to sup his way out. <laughs> oh my god amazing Car's filling. I suck my way out <laughs> <laughs> the the fucking crazy thing is uh this was this image is from 2007 so it went um it went 12 years on google satellite or whatever and uh and nobody saw it until the until now or whatever so or at least nobody saw and reported it um, man, just kind of kooky. It's kind of kooky that shit like this can still happen, you know? The world's a big-ass place, man. <laughs> can I quote you on that one? <laughs> I already have a bumper sticker. I'll send it to you. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Yeah, but just a kind of kooky story. Kind of um, definitely would uh, recommend hopping, hopping on show notes and uh, checking out... Uh, Checking out this image because it's uh, it's kind of kooky, and it is it is very eerie. Um, but anyway, so uh, we'll go ahead and cruise on to something from ABC Seven News. Um, this one's kind of a weird story because I I think that they well they I think that this was kind of um, well it was definitely. I'm trying to think of the in 51st dates they actually had somebody that was in a memory thing similar to this as a joke and the guy like every minute or something like that his his no, memory the, reset it was the chick no 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 this was um this was played by a a, a dude when cuz she goes Drew Barrymore is admitted to this like memory whatever but they have another patient in there and I can't remember what his name is, but he's like, you know that crew of actors that basically is in every Adam Sandler movie? Yeah. It's like one of those guys. But um, but anyway, his his memory resets like every minute. And I was like, oh, that's funny. You know, I'm sure that doesn't exist or whatever. Or, or at least uh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, apparently it does exist. Maybe not in the minutes realm, but in the hours. Um so I pulled this one from ABC7 News. Uh, Illinois teens' memory resets every two hours after accidental kick to the head. Um, super crazy, man. So Riley Horner was kicked in the head and uh, basically received a traumatic brain injury on June 11th uh, of this year because she was at a, a dance and somebody was crowd surfing and she just got a boot to the noggin, which that's kind of incredible that somebody could be crowd surfing that fucking hard <laughs> i know dude right I what the show was yeah right um but anyway so after dozens of seizures and countless hospital visits her uh symptoms are still a medical mi- mystery um they basically uh dismissed it as a concussion and sent her home on crutches and uh, they can't find anything wrong using, like, MRIs or uh, CT scans. So it's, I mean, there's no, uh, there's no bleeding, there's no inflammation, there's, no, there's nothing out of the ordinary, with the exception of, well, obviously she was having uh, seizures, but um, 
but yeah, they they can't figure out what the hell actually is is causing this kind of thing. But uh, in order to keep up with school, she has to leave herself detailed notes, take photos of them on her phone, and set an alarm for every two hours so that she can brush up on what she's forgotten. So I don't I don't understand how you know how uh, obviously we have long term memory versus short term memory. Doesn't something have to be in your short-term memory first to make it to long-term memory? Like, she will no longer be making long-term memories? Is that kind of how this works? Or do you, do you um, have any idea? I don't. I really don't know. Because um, um, you know how, like, people, you know, obviously people can have, like, amnesia and stuff, and uh, it's... It, it affects like whatever you know their their short term memory, but but then they they can remember like childhood memories and you know whatever years ago or something like that. I don't I don't understand how how she would progress kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because if, right. if it's if it's just get if her slate is being wiped every two hours, I don't know. I I don't I don't know how reviewing notes would actually help, but. Uh, but anyway, her uh, her uncle um, passed away, and she like basically learns about that every day because uh, she you know she can't commit it to memory. That was uh, her mom was talking about how uh, her her brother passed away last week, and she probably has no idea. We tell her every day, but she still has no idea about it. Um, so Riley was quoted as saying. Uh, I know it's hard for them as much as it's hard for me, and people just don't understand. It's like a movie. Uh, I will have no recollection of uh, this interview come supper time. Super fucking weird. That's that's <laughs> su- that's really crazy, right? But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just uh, I di- I didn't realize that conditions like this actually existed. I guess, but uh, yeah. I guess if if you can have anything that uh, affects your memory, it can it can do it over hours or days or whatever. It just depends on what you know. I guess how much your brain was affected. So yeah, um, I think she's faking it. <laughs> I'm calling her fake news. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> calling it now. I'm uh, calling it now. It comes out that she's a fucking liar. <laughs> That would be. I mean, you don't. I, what, what do you do? You just have to write shit down. That's what you just have to do, I guess. Like, yeah. what else? What else is there? It's like fucking. Wonder if you could tab. rewire that, you know, section of your brain somehow by taking. Well, a but that's the problem. <laughs> by taking by microdosing. <laughs> microdosing. Yeah. <laughs> so then I got high as fuck for fifteen years. <laughs> now I can remember stuff. Everything fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> But the cool thing is, is I can't remember that everything fell apart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and cruise on to talking about the gig economy and how it's getting reworked. Oh yes, 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 yes. Ooh baby, yes. ooh baby, ooh baby, yes. Ooh baby, yes. Let's <laughs> see about the yes. So this has been something that. Has been hotly contested for years, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are gig economy workers employees? Um, so you and I were briefly discussing this, I guess uh, a couple days ago, yesterday maybe, a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but I mean this this just seems like something that's going to live in the court systems for a, a long effing time um, because it doesn't seem that. Um, I just don't know, I don't know how you, how, how you get there quickly, right? Like if the employment paradigm shifts, mm-hmm. like what it means to be an employee shifts, mm-hmm. then it seems so too can the, um, you know, so too can the definition of what an employee is, obviously, yeah. you know, from both sides of the table, right? Yeah. So real quick though, um, just cause I actually needed to look up for clarification. So the gig economy, when people refer to the gig economy, because I was talking about this article with uh, some other people and they were like, I mean, what exactly is the gig economy kind of thing? Um, So I looked it up real quick. 
uh, a gig economy is a free marketplace in which uh, temporary positions are common and organizations contract with independent workers for short-term engagements, basically like gigs, like a, a, a short gig kind of thing. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Right. So think, uh, think Airbnb and the, mm-hmm. and the, the, the sub companies that have sprouted up under Airbnb. Um, mm-hmm. I, an example of this is uh, there are companies that if you're renting Airbnbs, you can hire the companies to come in and welcome people into the Airbnb. It's like a like a white glove concierge type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not like you're on, you're clocking, you know, in for a shift. Mm-hmm. Um, you are actually just, uh, you know, when the gig pops up, you can take it or not, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so what this this bill is, uh, the California State Senate has approved Assembly Bill 5, voting 29 to 11 in favor of requiring gig companies like Uber and Lyft to recognize independent contractors as employees. It's not a law just yet. It has to go through the State Assembly and secure California Governor Gavin Newsom's signature, but it's close to becoming one. So this is interesting because these companies are multi-billion dollar companies that have built up a business model in this way. Um, and uh, and these people are not employees, which means you do not have to provide um, different benefits uh, or, mm-hmm. or different consideration um, that is legally defined for employees. So, now – So we're drawing a, a line of delineation, I guess, between – independent contractors versus employees, correct? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And so an independent contractor, if you're an employee, you're do sign you're filling out what a W4? Is that what that is? Uh I'm I'm not sure to be honest. Yeah. Ver- it, versus a W2 kind of thing. Uh hold on. No, it's a W2. Excuse me. Hang okay. On. Hang on. As an employee, you do a W-2. Yeah, W-2, wage and salary information, W-2. Mm, okay. Um, if you are a contractor, you use a 1099, right? Um, mm. The way, kind of quick and dirty to think about this, uh, if you work for me, I get to tell you what to do, right? Mm-hmm. If you are a contractor, you have a um, modular skill set mm-hmm. that you bring in um and then i you know i agree that you're going to do this thing for me you do it and you know we agree on a timeline and all this shit you do it you return the value to my company or whatever mm-hmm. um and now you're free to go do whatever else you want to do right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um i think the core argument here is that you know this isn't like a specialized skill necessarily Mm-hmm. Um, people can, uh, you know, come and work whenever they want, which kind of, you know, puts a, puts a, uh, a, a slight weight on the 1099 side. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, it's this, this function is core to Uber's business, yeah. right? Um, which, uh, which is interesting, but, but the concept of general contracting, mm mm-hmm is very fucking real. Like we do this when we bri- build bridges and tunnels. We do this when we build houses. We do this. I mean, this is very, this is a thing that happens, right? Yeah. And so as a GC, you come in and you say, I'm going to build this house for you. Somebody says, okay, great. And you say, okay, here are the plans. And we agree on the plans or whatever. But I may be hiring crews that are masonry crews, are framing crews, are you know, finishing crews or whatever to come mm-hmm. in and, and kind of in a modular way knock this shit out, but I'm the GC, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it just seems like that um, there's tons of hair splitting. There's tons of, uh, of uh, you know, legal gray area that both sides are going to explore. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is interesting because these the companies um, are massive and have built – um, huge companies based on independent contractors, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I tend to think that, I guess just a big far reaching statement here, the mm-hmm. future of work is definitely portable mm-hmm. and is definitely, um, is not W2 work. I don't believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it seems like you're going to, you have marketing people, you have, you know, a sk- uh, like skilled labor, the, the future of skilled labor, I should say, is yeah. not will not be oriented, you know, towards W-2s. Um, however, 
And this is the part that kind of trips me up. I'm no legal eagle, so, um, mm-hmm. but just generally thinking about it. If you if you tell somebody, I don't care when you work, do it whenever, right? Like mm-hmm. you're not required to work at any given time. But then you step back and you incentivize the marketplace so that you'll always have somebody working. Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, I get it, but like you don't have to fucking Uber. No one's keeping you there. No one's yeah. making you Uber, you know? Yeah. Um, and so it's just interesting to me um, – you know, it's like it just seems like in some ways it's kind of, you know, the I, I, I would be willing to wager that the reason that a lot of people love Ubering, even though driving Uber or driving Lyft, even though it's probably not that profitable, mm-hmm. is that they can work whenever they want. <clears throat> yeah. So why should you get the benefit of working whenever you want but not have to give anything in return? Right. Yeah. Well, and plus, man, these the companies that they they basically reference in this article are already not profitable. So is this going to be like the nail in the coffin kind of thing? No, I mean for these guys. I don't know. That's a that's a that's a good question. I don't think so because I don't yeah. think it's going to go through. Not until yeah. the definition of what a W like. I think that the on a much much deeper level, the government is going to have to come in and change the way that we look at at employees, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I think saying here's a calendar, here's a schedule. Who wants to do it? Mm-hmm. Um, that to me feels very very different than than a W two relationship. Very 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 different, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, where the 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 engagement is just clearly defined and what your areas of responsibility are just clearly defined. Yeah. Um, yeah. These companies are so huge though, man, you know, Uber is $80 billion or whatever, you yeah. know, it's just, and they're, they have been working on a metric that VCs set up, you know, I guess here's my second to shit talk VCs <laughs> that, you know, the VCs invented, as they were playing financial hot potato with companies that could have lots of coverage, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it is, there is width and there is depth. And like in building a company for long term value, I would argue that that is w- like without a doubt, you know, oriented towards, you know, understanding margins well. Like those are the signs of, um, you know, understanding the nuances of how your business generates and captures revenue. Mm-hmm. Those are like the hallmarks in my mind of a business that's, that's oriented for the long term. Yeah. Um, I think that this idea of like, they call it like blitz scaling or something where yeah. you get as big as you fucking can as quickly as you can yeah. is, is, is frankly something that will be a relic in the past or yeah. Yeah, a relic in the past, a relic, um, because having a shitload of coverage does not necessarily equate to capturing that revenue in the most efficient way. Yeah. You know? And so, I mean, my short answer is I frankly, dude, I think Uber and Lyft will get chopped up in the end. Mm -hmm. I think they have technology that will, that is more valuable to other industries than it is to the, to the company that they've built. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, in the long run, uh, things like Airbnb, things like Uber and Lyft, um, and I mean this is no, this is nothing, you know, uh, earth shattering. This is just the nature of 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 how businesses grow and competitors come into the space. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt, that shit will be um, uh, commoditized. I mean, a thousand percent. Like you know, as car companies move into that space, to the, to the ride sharing space, mm-hmm. like, is it so crazy to be like, Hey, I buy, I bought a Toyota, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, when I'm at work, somebody else is going to come drive my Toyota and make money using my Toyota. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they're going to use a Toyota ride, ride hailing app. Like the, 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 the Uber and Lyft were insanely novel when they came out, but the technology now is it's would not be that difficult to create the tech. It's hard as shit to create the marketplace, right? Yeah. yeah. 
And so I think that you're going to end up seeing just with these companies um, and, again, companies like the big ones like uh, Airbnb and Uber and, you know, ride sharing and mm-hmm. kind of gig economy stuff. I just think you're going to see those – the, the it will it, be less about technology. It's more about the marketplace, which means you need a network effect, which means you just need a shitload of people. So like how many people own Toyotas, right? Like yeah. how many people rent from – the biggest property managers in the country. So it's not so crazy for the biggest property managers in the country to be like, sure, we're cool with an Airbnb style engagement, but you're going to pay us more. Yeah. Every time you got an, you know, a short term sub under your lease, you're responsible for it and we get a cut. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's ultimately where, where this shit is headed. So is it going to be the nail in the coffin for him? I don't think so, dude. Eighty billion dollars, mm-hmm. and now the public market is still is dealing with this shit show. Like mm-hmm. I think Uber and Lyft have, I mean, I, you know, we'll see in a decade, but I think they've got maybe fucking ten years more under their belt before yeah. this is like completely commoditized. You know, investors have looked at this and said this is a fucking joke. Like to the extent. That I mean, we're in a wacky finance world now, anyway. But to the extent that making money stays, to, you know, keeps to be uh, or remains an important aspect of running a business, yeah, um, I don't think it will be. I think yeah. they'll absorb it um, if it comes to pass. I don't think it's going to come to pass because really the work needs to happen on the side of the IRS mm-hmm. and the government defining, and maybe this is a step in that direction, but defining what the what an employee is. Yeah. Like you need so, their definition. So is this – I would kind of liken this to uh, the pushback that Airbnb and all all of the um, like whatever, Verbo or VRBO, um, how they were getting – they were kind of under fire for not – they were functioning as a hospitality in the hospitality industry, but they were kind of getting around having to – uh, follow like whatever, like running a hotel, like the guidelines or, right. or not guidelines, but uh, like restrictions and regulations and stuff. Is that, I mean, it, it kind of seems reminiscent of that, which that, I don't think that any of that shit really uh, got, I guess, uh, panned out in regards to um, getting regulation that, that called uh, these, you know, whatever the, um, uh, what are the, the, Airbnbs and all that stuff, um, they still don't have to follow the same regulations, right? Um, as, as like whatever hot. Uh, oh my god! In certain cities, they do. They do. In oh, certain, so they did. In certain okay. cities, Airbnb is not allowed. Okay. And in certain residential areas, Airbnb is not allowed. But man, a building yeah. I was living in, in Los Angeles, Airbnb oh. was not fucking allowed, and then a new company bought the building and then yeah. they they actually um sold units in the building to a private company that only does Airbnb around the United States. So some kind of fucking like legal loophole kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I, I don't think the city of Los Angeles has banned it, so it's not yeah. not like that, but huh. uh. Yeah, it's I mean, that's that's it's interesting cuz it's uh I mean, shit, man, because that, that it, but it would, it recognizing, or these companies having to recognize their, um, whatever the people that work under them as employees versus independent contractors. I mean, that's going to, that, that would, that's going to hit these companies kind of hard, is it not? Yeah, I think, I mean, it would be, it would be, a, it would be a huge challenge for them. I just don't see it happening. Yeah. I mean, I think that this is like, this is what's in the news cycle now. Two years ago, we were talking about upping minimum wage to fifteen bucks. Mm-hmm. McDonald McDonald said, "Sure, fuck you." Now we're doing kiosks. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, this is the this is the same thing, dude. I mean, if you are completely unskilled labor, mm-hmm. like it, the world is going to be a very very tough place for you in the coming yeah. years. You know, for sure. And and yeah. I mean, so what I'm saying is, learn to woodwork. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm I am. 1000% convinced that as we continue to push technology to automate the things that can be automated, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, like the like artistic uh, assistance or pursuit or uh, coding, like literally, dude, mm-hmm. learn to build a staircase or learn fucking, you know, 
Ruby on Rails, yeah. right? Like th- those are the two play because it's you know spreadsheet jockeys that shit will will ultimately go away or be, will be kind of a you know uh, an, an iterative aspect of uh, coding, you know a machine throwing a bowl or you know a chunk of wood on a lathe and coming up with a beautiful bowl probably less likely you know but it's like yeah. I, the, that that's where the, like the you know the human human work effort will migrate or to the yeah. end so, right yeah the shit in the middle things like driving um i mean we can assess these you know yeah for sure well it's gonna be uh it's gonna be kind of interesting to see if, if that actually does get pushed through i mean it does. It doesn't seem like. Uh, I, I feel like the these companies are big enough to have lobbyists that will kind of, uh, uh, I guess, stomp out this uh, smoldering fire kind of thing. Right. Right. <laughs> but uh, anywho, um, let's go ahead and cruise on to this uh, this Medicare scam that is uh, currently going on, which I. I kind of shared a story with Joseph when we were going over articles to cover in this episode. And, um, but I'll, I'll, uh, go ahead and cover this shit and then I'll tell you a little, uh, anecdote of, of, uh, my, uh, I guess vicarious experience with it. But, um, anyway, so I pulled this one from CBS news, uh, genetic testing scam preys on seniors, cancer fears, and maybe costing taxpayers millions. So basically what, what happened is um, this, this company, Gen X, was sending, um, which this is, it's a super convoluted story, but um, it's, they, Gen X is, let's see, uh, the company does its business through a web of entities that hires recruits throughout the country. That's literally how they were described. Um, so they send, they sent, uh, testers in quotation marks to areas that and like festivals and stuff like that that um that they knew older people would be there kind of thing and they they put up ads as basically saying oh free genetic testing so that we can uh we can we can see if you have a higher uh disposition for um or I'm sorry, a pre a predisposition for cancer, or if you already had cancer, we can see how likely it would be passed on to your progeny, kind of thing. Right. Um. So this lady and her husband, uh, Ken and Judy Johnson, um, they were at a Fort Lauderdale Arts Festival. So just that's that's the kind of spaces that this uh, that this company is um, preying on, I guess. Uh, and so they, they went over there and she was quote, Judy was quoted as saying, I've, I've had cancer. I had cancer six years ago. Uh, they indicated that they could give us some, they being the, uh, Gen X, they could give us some results that if it's genetic, that it could be passed on to my children. We've got four daughters. So they went ahead and did the testing and stuff. And, uh, because Gen X said, Oh, we're just going to bill Medicare. You know, it's free for you out of pocket, you know, but we're going to bill Medicare. So, and they said that they would get their results in four to six weeks. That was almost a year ago. Okay. So this, uh, this company was sending out, um, people to get basically like cheek swabs and, uh, and, and pretty much analyze the, the, their DNA but basically send nothing in in return so that the the uh <laughs> the person that was being tested wouldn't really have an argument against them because they didn't have to actually pay anything out of pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is this does this not kind of uh seem similar to that article that we covered a while back that there was like whatever random fucking white vans driving around. And I can't remember the the company, the company's name that but Gen X kind of sounded familiar. It's, uh, I don't. Do re- yeah, I, I don't recall. Yeah. Well. Anyway. So. Um, so yeah. So basically, what what ended up occurring is they um, 
Their Medicare accounts were charged for a slew of genetic tests amounting to thousands of dollars. Uh, Judy's account was billed for more than 10000 and uh, Ken, her husband, he, his account was billed for more than $8,300. Um, this is not like a... a um, isolated case kind of thing like this this shit apparently is popping up all over the the country they were talking about north carolina uh texas um and then what uh, this was in uh fort lauderdale so florida um i mean this shit is like kind of uh rampant and I mean, dude, it's, it's, you know, they, they were talking about this one lady that ended up getting billed for more than $21,000. And you're talking about one person. Um, dude, talk about putting a fucking hardcore uh, pressure on our, like, Medicare fund. Holy fuck, you know? And the, the, the other thing that is unnerving so about it's this just, shit. So it's just fraud. It's, you know, it's complete fraud, but the other thing is, is they're also getting this DNA, um, this DNA uh, fuck, samples and stuff from, from all these different people, you know? So it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of a multifaceted <laughs> fraud, I guess, because obviously Medicare is getting, you know fucking taxed to shit with the with all this stuff and then in addition to that they're getting dna results and stuff that they obviously could resell you know um so let's see i wanted to i wanted to get to this one da, 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 da. let's see a woman who asked us not to use her name was the office manager in texas for gen x um documents she shared with us show uh, let's see. Doc documents she shared with us show in her less than three months on the job, recruiters for Gen X swabbed more than 2,300 seniors. Um, the woman was quoted as saying, it's pu it's just pure greed, pure, pure greed. It had nothing to do with taking care of the community. These swabs get lost. I'd find them in the garbage. Um, she said that they, would, they wouldn't be, like, stored in, like, a lab, you know, or a, a sterile environment or anything that they would just be storing these swabs in like refri refrigerators next to like hamburgers and, and people's lunches and stuff. Yeah. So um, it's just, a, it's just another fraud, man. Yeah. That's all it's going down. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, it is, uh, yeah, God, we're just going to see so much of this shit as the population continues to get that old, you know, older, yeah. you know? Yeah, totally. 100% man. Um, now, to get to my anecdote, um, Megan's mother uh, actually, I think, fell prey to something kind of similar to this. Which, if if you if you are an older listener or not an older listener, doesn't matter. Um, if someone offers you free testing of any kind, there's there's a reason. So just sit down and think about it before <laughs> before you actually do it. But anyway, so, um, I think Megan's mom got like some kind of, um, some kind of like flyer or she saw something at like whatever, some, you know, like the grocery store or some shit. And it said, Oh, you know, contact us. We can do all this, um, all this testing, not necessarily genetic testing, but just like a series of tests to make sure that like your organs are functioning well and stuff. And, um, and so she, you know, went and did this and then they con, you know, not only do, um, they're like, oh, well, you know, we need to do some follow-up stuff cause there's, uh, and of course the follow-up shit is not free. Uh, they're like, oh, these, these are kind of some, you know, weird results. And so they do follow-up testing and then, you know, bill Medicare and everything. And so it, it really is, I mean, it's, it's like you said, man, it's, this shit is going to pop up left and right as the baby boomers age. I mean, shit, dude. I'd say yeah. in, in the next 10 years, man, I bet this shit is going to be fucking ubiquitous, man, and just like fucking all over the United States, and we're, we're going to have to be 
really watching the the older population and making sure that they don't fucking you know fall prey to this shit. Right, so. and so I think the point that you're making is just steal their DNA before anybody else does. <laughs> okay, I'm glad yeah. that I'm glad anyway, that my main point came through. <laughs> any look, any person over the age of fifty that you see walking down the street, gr- like grab a handful of their hair, carry plastic bags in your pocket, <laughs> take a picture of them, right? Go yeah, home, yeah. label the bags. And sell that shit. <laughs> Label the bags and then send it to uh, Tether Radio. <laughs> Tether Radio. <laughs> P.O. Yeah. Box. I mean, dude, it's it's a fucking money tree out there. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, but no, man, it's, uh, you know, because this, this is the thing. that silver, bro. <laughs> yeah. This is the thing that uh, that the aging population isn't thinking about. Basically, no, anyone no, other than dude, themselves. I mean, look, man, the the level. I mean, the level of insidiousness with older people has always been there, but it's like yeah. now it's like reaching a f- fucking fever pitch, dude. Reverse well, that's because there's so many of them. Reverse mortgages. Yeah, yeah, reverse mortgages. Exactly. That's, that's the one where they're like, yeah, it's called a reverse mortgage. We pay you. It's like, no, bitch, you buy the fucking house, <laughs> and then you say you're out in fifteen fucking years. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. We pay you in installations. You now yeah. live in my house. Yeah. <laughs> and I drink your milkshake. <laughs> oh my god! I poop in your bathrooms. I don't leave. I, I leave toilet seats up. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Donald. Uh, this is uh, Joseph from the Reverse Mortgage Company. I'm just gonna go ahead and ask you to replace the toilet paper in uh, bathroom three, please. Uh, <laughs> um, so, anyway, we noticed that you were skipping and only getting one ply. Yeah, yeah. You better get that two ply because you're out in six and a half months and uh, <laughs> don't mow the lawn anymore because uh, you don't mow another man's lawn. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um all right yeah. here we, here so we go. let's uh let's go ahead and uh like a, like a screeching weasel into the last <laughs> the last uh, article here yeah <laughs> um all right really though who has the best chicken sandwich <laughs> Which we did, we did uh, cover this a little bit, but now the metrics are in, so I wanted to uh, yeah. just do a, a revisit. I mean, god damn it, dude. Like, <laughs> you know... <laughs> this is news, Joseph. The people need to fucking know. <laughs> it's just... It's like Jeffrey fucking Epstein flying around the world like banging anyone under the age of like 13 or whatever the fuck was going on (laughs) with bill clinton you know what i mean like this this insane shit is going on but popeyes can't keep chicken sandwiches on the shelf so i mean i you know i don't expect people to like (laughs) to go and like you know go see the clintons with you know uh like tar and feather and pitchforks and shit but jesus h man like (laughs) it's pretty clear the wool is is fully over the ohos now (laughs) yeah um anyway (laughs) but i digress popeyes Uh, got into a little bit of uh uh, a sandwich feud pardon the pun here got into a beef (laughs) with um would that be a pun Mm, maybe i don't know (laughs) <laughs> anyway, um, got into. A I think of- something better would be like Popeyes. Popeyes got uh, in the in the sandwich feud. Popeyes got Chick Fil A to chicken out. Yeah, they played a game of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so who has the best sandwich? Who gives a fuck? I don't eat this garbage anyway, for the most part. <laughs> who but, gives a fuck? But but Popeyes. This like started on Twitter, I think. Uh, numbers don't lie, bro. What? I said numbers don't lie, bro. That's right. That's right. Popeye. Dude, Dad called me bro, bro the other day. <laughs> what? He like he was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, man. He, I was helping him hang that uh, mount his TV on the wall, <laughs> and he was like, oh, I think you need to go up a little bit, bro, bro. Was it a mini stroke? Like, I was like, what? Anyway, sorry. 
I digress. Wow. Um, so, uh, yeah. Fucking, I'll save you the, the, the details of the story. Yeah. Very long story short. Way too long of a story. Very, very short. Chicken feud comes up. Fast food restaurants are like, I have the best. No, I have the best. Popeye's sold the fuck out of some chicken sandwiches. Mm-hmm. A thousand chicken sandwiches a day, doubling some store volume. Right, per, that's per store. Per store, yeah. people were buying ch- like hundreds of dollars of chicken sandwiches and reselling them. Yeah. <laughs> what in the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, in what world? I, I just can't. I don't get it. I don't get it. So I mean, it's not like okay. Here's where maybe I'd get you'd get that reaction from me. Mm-hmm. Meteor hits, okay? Mm-hmm. Cracks open. It's a fucking sauce meteor, okay? Yeah. There's some sort of extraterrestrial of alien origin sauce, okay? Yeah. Clearly marked sauce. Yeah. One bottle. 20 ounces. That's all we get. Okay. <laughs> then I'll stand in goddamn line for a chicken sandwich with <laughs> some of that alien sauce on it. <laughs> oh, but my short God. of that, no fucking way, man. I mean, they have the sandwiches now, don't they? Didn't they have them before? No, so I, this was this was I'm pretty sure this was like a like pretty much like the McRib of McDonald's. Okay, so so they don't have the sandwiches anymore. I I know I don't know at this point, but I know that I they called, did not I have the bull shit on that. You know what I mean? Like somebody <laughs> somebody sneezed and like knocked some Thousand Island dressing over to the fucking fryer later. <laughs> the fry later like that's what the fuck happened and then you know whatever uh, i mean it's just it's 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 crazy it's crazy yeah, but yeah. but i mean whatever i mean the you know the human side of you is just like oh this is fun this is funny ha 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 but i'll i'll bet you like somebody got the shit kicked out of him over some chicken sandwiches and i saw i did see one one the thing i'll wrap with here is um yeah. i did see one little blurb i was in atlanta when all this was going down Mm-hmm. And there were these dudes that bought like something absurd, like four hundred dollars worth of chicken sandwiches or something. Yeah, and they were trying to resell them. And people were like, "They're cold, nah." <laughs> and so then these two dudes had these comically large bags full of chicken sandwiches that nobody wanted. <laughs> That's why you gotta throw that shit in a cooler, man. Yeah, keep I that, think keep the warmth. Yeah, I think people wanted them fresh, man. You know, yeah. fresh. Yeah, because then you got to deal with like condensation on the bun, and nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. If you would have been, if you would have been a true fucking food hustler, motherfucker, what you would have done is Heat just lamps. said, <laughs> "Yeah, it's exactly right." You would have said, "Yo, give me the just the, the slab of chicken." Actually, mm. you would order a whole one, right? Mm. Then you would say, "Give me a a ton of buns." I want. I want you to give me. Everything. I want all your buns. <laughs> I want to. Right. I'm gonna need your buns. I'm need your, your chicken. Buns. Your sauce. I'm gonna need. Uh, I'm gonna need a bag with your sauce. I'm gonna need. Uh, I'm gonna need a bag with the buns. Uh, do not. <laughs> do not put them together. I'm gonna be doing that in the parking lot. Um, I'm gonna be doing that on my pontoon. <laughs> doing that on my pontoon boat. Um. Anyway, fuck. Whatever. Jesus. <laughs> Fuck whatever. So real quick though, I did want to mention this. I, I I didn't I don't know if you mentioned this or not, but when this was going down, <clears throat> the chicken sandwiches alone accounted for thirty percent of Popeye's uh sales. Louisiana good or whatever it is. <laughs> Louisiana fast or something like Louisiana that. Louisiana fast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had uh yeah, I've had Popeyes, I think. Dude, I, I don't know. I mean all look, we give SeaWorld whales fucking volume. There's microplastic everywhere. We're gonna be cancer cancer fucking riddled in about two years. Like <laughs> yeah. 
Fuck it, man. You should pound a, a, a Popeye's chicken in any orifice you have. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just like, oh, shit. Chicken up. That's awesome. Shut chicken up, up. Chicken up. Bitch. <laughs> bitch. Oh, that's fucking awesome, man. All right. All right. Here we go. I think, yeah, I think it's about that time, right? It is about that time. So, reach out. Ping us. Call us on the cans. I don't fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was going that. Tetherradio at gmail.com. That's T E T H E R R A D I O at gmail.com. We love to hear your uh, thoughts, comments, everything in between. Our password is. Ooh. Ooh. Man, that was a close one. <laughs> Screech! <laughs> Please don't do it, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, Twitter at Tether underscore radio Instagram at Tether underscore radio Facebook Tether radio all one word Uh, Man this is episode 64 66 (laughs) Oh man Oh yeah I'm so so full of episodes dog Uh, (laughs) Episode 66 Jeez this is a good one Covered, covered a little bit of ground had a lot of tangents but you know what life man life it's just random bro seize it yeah. seize it <laughs> stick to the script man what are you doing Spongebob Squarepants get out there and live it <laughs> anyway oh, shit. Uh, I'm Joseph and I'm Daniel and you've been listening to Tether Radio episode 66 we appreciate you lending your ears and attention for a little bit Um, we will see you next week and also remember folks stay tethered we'll be right back here for you in about a week's time thanks